Cumulative frequency curves. This screencast assumes that you know what a grouped frequency distribution is and that you're familiar with terms like range and median. I will show how to find the cumulative frequencies from the frequency table, how to write down the upper class boundaries, how to plot the cumulative frequency curve, then I'll show how to find the median from the cumulative frequency curve, and also how to find the upper and lower quartiles. And finally, we'll calculate the interquartile range, and I'll try and explain what it means. Cumulative frequency is simply the running total of the frequency. To explain what I mean, let's look at a concrete example. Here's some data on the results of, from some crest seedlings grown on soil. There were seven crest seedlings between 40 and 45 millimetres in height. To find the cumulative frequencies, you just add a row for the cumulative frequencies. The first cumulative frequency is 7, because nothing plus 7 is 7. The next cumulative frequency is 19, because that's 7 plus 12. The third cumulative frequency is 7, 12 and 15, which gives 34. But you could work that out by taking 15 and adding it to 19, which itself is the total of the previous two numbers. And finally, just add 3 to the 37. Sorry, just add 3 to the 34 to get 37. That 37 should actually be equal to the total of the frequencies, and that's a way of checking the result. Next, we need to identify upper class boundaries, as that's what we plot the cumulative frequencies against when you draw the cumulative frequency curve. The upper class boundary of the first interval is the largest value that can be allocated to the first interval. Now you see how it's x smaller than or equal to 45. That makes the first upper class boundary 45. By the same token, the next upper class boundary is 50. The next one's 55. And then the final one is 60. These intervals are written in a particularly straightforward fashion. Some intervals can be written in such a way as to make it slightly harder to work out the upper class boundaries. There are examples of that on the handout. Now we need to actually plot the cumulative frequencies against the upper class boundaries to be able to draw the curve. This is what the data we're plotting looks like. You don't need to draw a new table in exams. There's normally a table you fill in. The upper class boundary is plotted on the horizontal axis and the cumulative frequency is always plotted on the vertical axis. A suitable graph scale might look like this. Notice how the height goes from 35 up to 60 millimetres because that suits the data. But the cumulative frequency axis always starts at zero. To plot the first point, I go along to 45 millimetres on the horizontal axis and up to 7 on the vertical axis. I'm using enormous blobs to get over the YouTube resolution. You would be using small neat crosses. Along to 50 and up to 19 gives us the second blob. Along to 55 and up to 34 gives us the third blob. And the last blob is 60 up, up to 39. It's actually 37. Then we add a point at 40 and 0 cumulative frequency. I chose 40 millimetres as the zero point because that's 45 minus 5, or an interval width of 5, before the first upper class boundary. This extra point provides us with a starting point for the curve. Finally, you draw a smooth curve through the points. Don't join the points dot to dot. I'm now going to remove my big orange blobs. You can see the smooth S-shaped curve clearly. Most data will give you an S-shaped curve of some kind. Once you have your cumulative frequency curve, you can use it to read off various values, including the median. Remember that the median is the value of the middle data item. Now, 37 was our total frequency, and 37 divided by 2 is 18.5. You can see that from this table of the data. So we can find 18.5 on the cumulative frequency axis. Then we draw a line along until it meets the curve. Then draw a line down until it crosses the horizontal axis. You read off the value on the horizontal axis. I estimate it to be 49 millimeters. Remember, it is the value on the horizontal axis corresponding to half the frequency that gives the median. 
don't write down half the frequency and pretend it's the median. That's a very common mistake in tests. Having found the median, we can go on and find the quartiles. Quartiles, as the name suggests, have to do with quarters. The quartiles can give you some information on how spread out your data is, and they can also tell you something about the middle 50% of your data items. The lower quartile tells us what value 25% of the sample are less than, and therefore 75% more than. The upper quartile is just the reverse of that. It tells us what value 75% of the sample are less than, and therefore what the top 25% reach to. There are 37 crest seeds in total, so you can probably work out what a quarter and three quarters of 37 is. A quarter is 9.25 and three quarters is 27.75. So to recap, we now use the graph to find what lengths or heights of the seedlings correspond to cumulative frequencies of 9.25 and 27.75. To find the lower quartile, here's our blank curve again. To find the lower quartile, just draw that line along from 9.75 until it meets the curve and drop a line down to the x-axis. I make it to be 45 millimeters, more or less. In the same way, to find the upper quartile, you draw a line across from 27.75 on the vertical cumulative frequency axis till it meets the curve, and you drop a line down and read off the corresponding upper quartile value. I make that to be 52 millimeters to the nearest one. The interquartile range, as the name suggests, it's simply the upper quartile minus the lower quartile, and it tells you how wide your frequency distribution would be if you plotted a histogram or bar chart. The interquartile range is just the difference between the upper and lower quartile. Recapping our values so far, we've got median is 49 millimeters, lower quartile is 45, upper quartile is 52. So the interquartile range is 52 minus 45, or 7 millimetres. The interquartile range tells you how the middle 50% of your distribution is spread out, so you know that half the cress seedlings lie in the range 45 up to 52 millimetres in, in height or length. You can also use the interquartile range to compare distributions for spread. There'll be more about comparing distributions in a later screencast. In summary, if you're asked to draw a cumulative frequency chart in the exam, you need to calculate a running total of the frequencies, plot those against the upper class boundaries, which you've identified correctly, draw a smooth curve through the points. That curve should always be going up. It should be an S-shape going up. It should never come back down again. If it comes back down again, you've probably plotted the frequencies by mistake. You can read off the median value from your graph. Remember to use the value corresponding to the middle of the sum of the frequencies, not the middle of the sum of the frequencies itself. Then you can calculate the lower and upper quartiles, and you can use that to find the interquartile range by subtracting. The interquartile range gives you some information on how spread out your data is. Your turn. If you download the handout that goes with this screencast, you'll find a range of different kinds of frequency table so you can practice finding the upper class boundaries. Any GCSE textbook will also have piles of revision examples for this topic. And that's the end of this screencast.